Tomorrow, the House of Commons will sit on a Saturday for the first time since the Falklands War. After three years of debate then, the future of Brexit might all come down to a straight fight in Parliament. And I hope very much now, speaking of elected representatives, that uh, my fellow MPs in, uh, in Westminster uh, do now uh, come together uh, to get uh, Brexit done. We have 650 MPs in the House of Commons, but only 639 of them actually vote. Boris Johnson then needs 320 MPs to back his plan on Saturday and we leave the European Union. There are 287 Conservative MPs. All will be told or whipped in parliamentary language to vote for the deal. That includes 28 members of the ERG group who support a harder Brexit and refuse to back Theresa May's deal. Some may not end up voting for it this time, but let's assume they do. Boris Johnson is still short, so where does he find the numbers to get him over the line? Well, not from the SNP, Plaid or the Greens. They're all likely to vote against, as are the Liberal Democrats and the Independent Group for Change. Crucial here could be the 10 MPs from the DUP in Northern Ireland. They are still insisting they will vote against the deal. But there are two other groups that could be won over. First, 23 former members of the Conservative Party. Most were expelled last month for voting to stop a no-deal Brexit. Some, though not all, are likely to back the government this time. Then there is the Labour Party itself. Leader Jeremy Corbyn has called this new deal even worse than Theresa May's plan. It does nothing to deal with all the concerns that we've raised during Theresa May's premiership and his about a race to the bottom in rights and protections. But there are still a small number of Labour MPs in constituencies with a large leave vote who may disagree and vote with the government. Boris Johnson needs to convince enough of these, perhaps with a handful of independent MPs, to bolster the numbers. It does look very tight. A lot may even depend on whether some MPs vote against his plan or decide to abstain, as in don't vote either way. If that happens, then the maths gets even more complicated, but it could just tip the balance in favour of the Prime Minister's deal.